Let us pray. Ever-living God, in the quietness of these moments, breathe your Holy Spirit into the words that are read and proclaimed like you breathed your spirit into the disciples long ago. Open us to the power of the risen Christ in this place, in our lives, and in the world. Amen. In 2007, roommates Joe Gebbia and Brian Chesky needed some cash, and they took advantage of a San Francisco design conference. Because people had been coming for the conference, they booked all the hotel rooms in local hotels. They decided to buy three air mattresses and rent them out on their hardwood floor, and then provide a lovely ham and Swiss omelet the next morning. Air Bed and Breakfast, now known as Airbnb, was formed. Gebbia and Chesky bet the whole company on the hope that with the right design, people would be willing to overcome what we all know as stranger danger, stranger danger. What they didn't realize is just how many people were ready and waiting to put that bias aside. In a 2016 TED Talk entitled Designing for Trust, Gebbia shares their pitch to the investors. Quote, we want to build a website where people can publicly post pictures of their most intimate spaces, their bedrooms, their bathrooms, the kinds of rooms you usually keep closed when people come over. And then, over the internet, they're going to invite complete strangers to come and sleep in their homes. It's going to be huge. <laughs> Unquote. Well, it didn't take off right away, but it was, they had a lot of work to do to build trust and gain reliability in their company. Recent statistics show that Airbnb has well over 150 million users, maybe more than that already. And data on the website states about 2 million people stay in an Airbnb every night. They are in 220 countries, and they have listings in 100,000 cities. Now, Airbnb has a widely popular, is widely popular. It's a widely popular way of exploring, traveling, experiencing new cultures. But it inherently has some risks. What's compelling about the popularity and the rise of Airbnb is the level of trust that must be held. Now, this may be completely me. Will the pictures online really be what it looks like when I get there? Will it be clean? I mean, the sheets, the towels? Will they really reset the secure access code for me when I get there? And if you're posting a place online, how do I know that I can trust the people who are coming to stay in my place, that they won't wreck it or host a big out-of-control party? Well, Airbnb hasn't been without criticism recently for leaving guest, guests locked out in the rain, or unruly parties that are held against policy, or individuals in various cities buying up places, making them Airbnb-worthy, and then displacing local residents, all criticisms that have been had. Well, the services of Airbnb or transportation services like Uber or Lyft are evidence of the power of trust to build relationships even amid very real risk. Right? Our passage today highlights how Jesus' ministry is designed for trust. Let me say a little bit more. It's all about opening doors, car doors, house doors, the locked doors protecting the disciples. Gebbia describes how designing for trust is the critical factor in getting people to open their doors. 
and whether to let people enter, right, or let people in. I am grateful for the writings of New Testament professor Renee Schreiner for this insight that she offered me this week. In the case of the disciples, it's a matter of getting them out the door, right, despite the risks to fulfill their commission from Jesus. Think about the gospel lesson this morning. It returns us to the first Easter day in the evening. We read the disciples being isolated, separated out of fear. Even a week later, we hear of Thomas's struggle with trusting Jesus when he encounters them. The word we read is believe. So if we think about the verb believe, we often associate it with our brains. I believe that this is good. I believe in something here. Trust, on the other hand, is more about relationship and exists along a spectrum, encompassing the feelings that of, of influence and thoughts and actions. Hence, we often associate believing with our heads and trusting with our hearts. So what if we reread part of the passage this morning, embracing this nuance of trust. Jesus' words to Thomas, do not be distrusting, but trusting. And are you trusting because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to trust. This is written so that you may come to trust that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through trusting you may have life in his name. But what we come to understand in this text is that the risk is essential to eliciting trust and trusting actions. Two things, trust and trusting actions. Our passage depicts a community immobilized by fear after Jesus' crucifixion. And Jesus' task, as he sneaks into the room, right, is to remobilize them. The inherent risk to the disciples is precisely why trust is needed. Risk and trust go hand in hand. The amount, one, uh, the amount of risk one is willing to take is dependent upon the amount of trust one has. One does not need to risk anything in order to trust. However, one must take a risk in order to engage in a trusting action. Does that make sense? I, I am I take a risk by coming to an Airbnb and I'm trusting that things will go well, but I, I can trust that it's good, but opening that door is a trusting action. So this highlights, think about it, the, the most important ways in which resurrection encounters, resurrection appearances in the Gospels for, are the form of, for, for the formation of the disciples. Let's say that again highlights how important the resurrection appearances are for the formation of the disciples. The very risky post-crucifixion situation is very fertile ground upon which their trust in Jesus can grow. Trust is a very essential precursor to cooperation with Jesus. The resurrected Jesus is seeking the cooperation of his disciples to continue the ministry he has been preparing them for. The Holy Spirit is not thrust upon them, neither are they pushed out the door. But Jesus abandoned traditional power structures long ago, right, throughout his ministry. And he warns the disciples that there is risk and risk of persecution and death in the ministry that they are about to engage in. Trust is indispensable precursor for what Jesus is asking these disciples to do, to continue his ministry on earth, commissioned by the Spirit. So if we neglect our own growth and our own trust in Jesus by avoiding risk, how can we ever possibly cooperate with Jesus in post-resurrection ministry? What does that look like? Well, in any risky situation, trust is needed for cooperation to begin. Once established, a trust relationship can be nurtured and followed with cooperation. 
We see this in the interaction between Jesus and Thomas. Jesus makes his body available to Thomas, and Thomas cooperates with Jesus' instructions. Examine my hands and my side. Jesus proclaims a trust as a follow-up for cooperative actions. And that's how trust evolves. Trust is not a one-time absolute, but a relational virtue that can be nurtured and grown. And we all know too well how relationships devolve when cooperation and trust are abandoned. In the first century, believing, trusting, was about relationship. It was about coming together to hear the stories and learn together the teachings of Jesus. It would take a certain togetherness to make it through the trying times after Jesus' death and carry the message forward. Together in community, the disciples learned to pray, learned to be in mission in the world. They learned how to stay together, learned how to um, pray, even when Jesus said he was going on before them. Trusting was about relationship. So back to the TED Talk, Gebbia says, today, homes are quite designed around the idea of privacy and separation. Think about your own. Houses are designed for the idea of privacy and separation. What if homes were designed to be shared from the ground up, he says? What would that look like? What if cities embraced a culture of sharing? He says, I see a future of shared cities that bring us community and connection instead of isolation and separation. Trust brings us together in community and connection instead of isolation and separation. Isn't that what the church should be, could be? Opening the doors, whether encouraging new folks who walk through or sending us who have been here a while out into the streets to encounter others in the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't that what the church could be? Well, having walked through Holy Week and in the week post Easter, we now relish several weeks of this Eastertide season. Christ is alive, and God is not stopped by death. Mixed up with joy, however, are other experiences. Trusting in new life and the unexpected is not always easy. Trusting in something new and strange can be unnerving. Every week, and every day we move through the world in all of its joys and all of its suffering. Along with Thomas, we are not always sure about what we hear or even what we see. Well, maybe we should spend some more time with Thomas, seeking what God is showing us today in this messy season of resurrection and new life.